Well, hello everyone, and we're back for another Thursday night stream. Let's see. So I have uh, should be streaming this both on Facebook and the YouTube. Uh, thanks to Streamyard. So if you're on YouTube, you should be able to comment. Let me get my comments up. And if you're on Facebook, I will not be able to see your comments. But if you want to, you can always hop on to uh, the YouTube page, uh, which is on the bottom, and uh, you can do it that way. All right. So we're talking. What is uh, tongue drum notation? And uh, it's a relatively new instrument. It's the wild, wild west. And I believe that solfege should be the primary way of thinking of instrument. You're going to get next. It's Larry. Um, let's see. Uh, hang on, give me two seconds. I'm just going to try to check my network connection. Thank you. Open network. Sorry, everyone. Let's see. Network preferences. Seems like it's not as strong as it can be. Oh. And that explains why I am currently connecting to Wi Fi instead of connecting to the Thunderbolt cable. Oh, give me two seconds. Ugh. Seems like all the big streams, this ends up happening. If not, I'm just going to go with the uh, suspect Wi-Fi. Oh, hello to everyone on YouTube. Oh, there we go. Okay, that should solve our issue. So, as we've been talking about, tongue drum is new. The uh, idea of notation is new. Typically, there's a tablature that ends up using uh, numbers, right? Similar to guitar tablature, ukulele tablature. And the idea is, I believe that it should be solfege, right? So instead of saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, uh, it should be do, re, mi, fa, so, and everything like that. So we're going to talk about the ways to convert the tongue drum notation to solfege. It's really, really, really intuitive. And if you're out there on YouTube, I'm interested to see if StreamYard is able to see any comments. So if you want to comment, that would certainly be appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So. Uh, what is solfege? Basically, solfege is just putting different syllables to different pitches. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, you would have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Each one of those being in a major scale. And you can alter these, right? You can turn uh, so's to to say's and la's to lays and things like that. And that's that differs a bit. Um, but basically, I was coming up with... Oh, well, thank you, Larry. If you jump on your laptop, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so let's, let's, let's pull up some stuff. So I'm going to share with you real quick. Um, so this week, I ended up creating some tongue drum notation, essentially, which is using a system of uh, solfege grid notation. I believe that's the, the best way I can sort of think about it. So let's pull pop that up. So uh, my son is a big fan of Big City Greens and uh, the song actually works really well for solfege because in the second part, I don't know if you're familiar with the show on Disney Channel, uh, it has a descending pattern of do ti la so fa mi re do do ti so fa do ti la so fa mi re do. I'm a little bit tired tonight, and um, it's a really, really, really good example of a descending major scale, and, and, and certainly something that you could use with the solfege. So, how do you notate it? So you can certainly do numbers, but you also need to show rhythm. So I'm deciding that the best way to do it is you have the uh, tongue drum on the. Uh, the video so you can see where everything needs to go. But then essentially you end up getting this grid. So if we were to click over, you would see that the individual notes would highlight depending on where they would go. All right. So if you had me, me would be three. And then if we keep going, you'd go to do, which would be one, 
So if we played exactly what's written on there, we'd have mi, do, fa, mi, mi. Lo, so would be down here. So, do, mi. Keep going. I took many, 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 many screenshots. Uh, but I think this is the both the clearest notation for tongue drum and also the one that you can get the most value out of. Um, reason being because solfege is a fairly universal, people are aware of it, as opposed to tongue drum tablature, which is only going to be a singular purpose. And it really isn't difficult to basically say every time I hit five, it's going to be so, and every time I hit one, it's going to be do, and every time I hit me, it's going to be three. Um, obviously, this is using a movable system. All right, let's see, what do we have here? So we have re, mi, re, do, do, a little pickup going on in there and so on and so forth. So if you have anyone out there who'd like to, uh, to to comment, I believe I could see YouTube comments according to StreamYard, but I have not been able to see any yet. So if you're out there, feel free to, to comment and, and, and say what uh, uh, the benefits you could either see of having the solfege notation. Uh, because personally, I think that the tongue drum is one of the simplest interfaces uh, especially for children, I mean, as, as young as two, where you're able to play it, you're able to then start developing the idea of uh, uh, center of pitch and and and, uh, and, and listening to, to, to pitch. And when I say center of pitch, uh, if you think about it, sometimes in music, you have... No, Larry, I cannot see it on the Facebook professional operation. Uh, yeah, Larry, I can only see it if it's on the YouTube. So I, I apologize, Larry. Yeah. Uh, so just a heads up, if you see it on the streaming on the bottom, anyone who is on Facebook, because I'm streaming this to both places, so it's on Facebook and it's on YouTube. Uh, I can only see comments on YouTube. I think. I still have yet to see, uh, be able to see a comment. But uh, yeah, only YouTube comments I'll be able to see and kind of highlight and we'll talk about that. Um, anyway, so we were talking. So uh, there's lot, there's lots of different ear training. And typically, I think most of us who went through high school, again, this is, uh, if you have no musical background, just kind of follow me for a second. You would typically end up learning uh, something by recognizing an interval. So you would re hear a, uh, a fifth, right? So you would hear. And the way you're hearing that is you're hearing uh, the distance between one pitch and another pitch. And of course, the famous one would be Star Wars, right? You know, one, five. Oh, I'm sorry. So you basically hear a note, you say, oh, okay, that's Star Wars, that would be uh, a perfect fifth. Or you would say, oh, okay, well, now I'm going to learn a perfect fourth, which is, here comes the bride, bum. Which is an absolutely, it's a, it's a great way to end up learning your, uh, your intervals and a great way for ear training. The one thing I realized as I eventually got more into solfege as I got uh, older, and from teaching elementary school, is you develop this understanding of center of pitch, right? You hear a major scale. And then you hear one note. And because you have that center of pitch, you hear don't hear that as a note. You hear, basically hear, you're able to walk that down the scale. So I hear this, and I can think, fa, mi, re, do. Larry, look. Yes, Larry. Again, as, as stated on the, the, the crawl, you can only, I can, I, well, correction, you can comment all you want on Facebook and I'll check it out later. Um, but the only way I can see through StreamYard is uh, if you're on the YouTube part of the stream. So this is going to YouTube and Facebook. Um, anyway, so back to the idea of center pitch. So, you know, you've established a scale, you have something in your head, you hear this, and you're no longer thinking, okay, well, that's from here to here. You're just thinking, okay, this is, Fa, because I can hear fa, mi, re, do. I'm able to walk it down. Uh, and for me, if I hear, I hear that, and I'm able to walk it back uh, up to do. So, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So that's one of the big advantages of, of using solfege for your ear training. It gives a different idea of, of being able to hear inner voicings and things like that. And again, this is a fancy... Uh, uh, a fancy way to do it. And I, I think um, 
again, the interface is so simple that that really any any child can use it. My child can use it. And again, he really really likes playing. We will rock you. bring up a couple of the main points uh okay so let's just talk about a couple of vocabulary things this always happens on the live streams uh, i talk as if i'm talking to music teachers and i realize there are, are parents out there that are either watching these videos or going to watch these videos and uh, so you'll see the word especially with tongue drum the word diatonic and diatonic um simply put means that it's going to have the notes of a major scale so it's going to have do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. And you can have low versions of that. So, la, ti, do. So whenever you hear the word diatonic, it just means it's in the major scale or in that. Um, and there's something called modes, but you don't need to worry about that. Just realize it's playing a major scale up and down. Uh, next vocabulary word. Uh, you also will see the word pentatonic. Uh, penta meaning five different notes. Uh, typically, this would mean that you would have do, re, mi, so, la, right? So it'd be one, two, three, four, five. And of course, you could go down. So you would be missing fa, you would be missing t. Um, realize, though, sometimes if people are saying pentatonic, they're referring to the minor pentatonic. That's a guitar thing. The pentatonic usually means do, re, mi, so, la. So if you're any guitar players out there saying that that's not a pentatonic, it's because they're, they're modes of each other. That's a totally different topic for a totally different video, but that's what's happening there. And then chromatic or, or chromaticism basically means that you're able to play all the white keys and black notes, uh, white keys and black keys on the piano. Uh, the tongue drum doesn't offer that, but again, that's what allows it to uh, have a little bit more simplicity, right? So, all right, you would have a note in here, and then there would be a note in there, and then there'd be a note in there, note in there, note in there, note in there. And I think if you if you haven't checked it out, although I have demonstrated that you can actually tune a tongue drum, I, I was quite impressed uh, that this does work. Uh, if you get some neodymium magnets, you pop it on there. Oh, actually, let's see. Sorry, let me get the, uh, no reason to have the slide on. Remove that. Cool. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you actually can get some chromaticism or some chromatic notes if you take these magnets and you move it a little bit closer. So, typically, one, two, three would be do, re, mi. But if I move this closer to the center, adding to the mass, it's actually going to raise it down to uh, do, re, we would refer to it as may if you're not familiar with saltfish. So, you would have do, re, bit out of tune because I didn't tune it right kind of tuning it on this on the fly let's see let's see let's get a little closer there we go do me re do so fa me re do so drum you can get some chromatic notes you can't get all of the chromatic notes I am very disappointed with the strength of this live stream all right, oh, we got some comments. Here we go. Oh, Larry Little. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's not a pentachord. I do like the way that you're discussing tonal centers. All right, so Larry, thank you for being here for the live stream. I appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, tonal centers. It's I I didn't have this understanding of tone or tonal centers really prior to becoming an elementary school music teacher, and I was constantly constantly using it um yeah it's different it's it's a, it's a totally different way of, of thinking of solfege. as you hear ray and it and you feel ray and i think there's a lot of things where if you're thinking stacked and block oh tim tim Ocello's here building the tunnels on ourselves that just helped me but yes Yes, Tim. Yeah, we'll, we'll absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about this. Yeah, Ray. There's there's, there's people here. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for being here, guys. Um, I think it was confusing, and I, I would always think, oh, it's because I'm not a piano player. That's why I wasn't good in uh, oral theory two or oral theory three. Um, you know, because you're trying to hear these. You know, you can hear chords on your instrument, or if you play a single uh, single line instrument, you know, you're, you're hearing single lines. But I think it's because. I wasn't hearing when you have a, a ray. Um, it's got it's got a feel. It has this feel, 
right? Ray wants to go down to do. Um, I'm a big fan in my classroom. A lot of times I'll give the kids the colored bells. Uh, I'll hand them out. I'll ask uh, someone to play something and I'll be able to say what color it is. And they think I'm, I'm made of magic. So yes. Uh, yeah. Tim, let's. Uh... Yeah. So absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Helps you kids with so much with improvisation. So Tim, I'm assuming uh, you have an ORF based background. I do not have an ORF based background. Um, I guess my background is originally Gordon and now mostly could die with a Gordon flair to it i i don't know it's 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 music education on the streets uh that's what it is um but absolutely right because having that tonal center it's it has something to go back to right if you're just sort of going ra randomly around it's just random but if you think about trying to get a uh, a motif that is trying to go back to do right And there's a resting, right, which is, uh, and we'll have to, I guess we'll talk about the, the, the general feels of that too. If there's a resting position, then yeah, absolutely. You have this improvisation that has a home. And that's what improvisation is. It's not just playing random scales. It's being able to play notes in a sequence that makes sense. And it's only going to make sense if it has a tonal center. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, pitch center. Let's see what we got here. Pitch tendencies in relation to the tonic, you mean? Uh, yes, in the relation to the tonic. Okay. So, yes, Larry, I did not develop a uh, perfect pitch at some point. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. So, yeah, what Larry's saying is, uh, yeah, pitch relations to the, to the tonic. Um, yeah, so if this is the, right, first note, and this happens to be pitched in D, right? Um, typically, you're not worried about that unless you have perfect pitch. You're just kind of thinking about a uh, movable system. But yeah, uh, absolutely, Larry, in pitch and tonic. Uh, and oh, Tim. Um, and he does mostly Gordon. Uh, Tim, I have to ask you a question. Uh, and this is, uh, well, I guess we're, we're, we're just chatting music. Uh, if you're still out there. Do you still use the Gordon syllables? Because I've switched to Kadai syllables. Uh, for anyone out there, uh, basically, I use uh, ta's and t. So ta ta t t ta tika t tika t tika t tika t ta ta t t that sort of thing. And and Tim is a if he's using the Gordon syllables, well, would be using basically do's and days. So it'd be down up essentially do day 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 do do. Um. So yeah, I mean, are you still using those syllables? Because I've switched, and I like the reason why I switched, but I'm interested to know if you're still using the, the syllables. I, I think both both work really, really, really well, and I like Gordon if you're going to go further with the rhythm. So yeah, let me let, let me know uh, when you're just uh, when you're just when you were discussing the ray. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I forgot the delay just fitting in the gaps. Oh yeah, no, I appreciate it. Oh. Let's see, Tim, I actually start straight with the numerical uh, syllables and have had success with it. Um, Tim, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think you're history's greatest monster, but people out there would think that you're some sort of monster for doing that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, what Tim's talking about, basically, so, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, like one and two and three and four and one E and a two and three and four and. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, a absolutely perfect system. I do think... It's uh, and we're talking we're talking kindergarten first grade. I don't know when you're when you're starting it. Um, I do think for me, ta's and t's are a little bit more black and white. You know, this equals a ta. This equals a t. Oh, let's see, Tim. Uh, completely new. Okay, so that makes sense. So you're going from a completely neutral syllable to to numerical. That makes sense. Yes, correct. One and two and three. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, teaching, so Tim, uh, this is a good point. Me teaching band and general, and elementary general, right? So I'm pre-K through five, and I also do, uh, you know, basically four and five band. There are times where I will be upset with myself, where I will almost say, 
what was your music teacher teaching you? And then I realized I was their music teacher. And again, because I, it's it's one of those things where in the band world, without a doubt, um, Kadai does not work nearly as well. I'm sorry if you're a big Kadai fan, but I think for, for band, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier to do rehearsals with a numerical system. Um, if you say, hey, let's take it from beat four, or we need to take it on the, the end of beat four, and you're referring to where things are specifically in their place, that's important. Um, I think that happens less with children's choral music. Um, apparently, I didn't plug in my computer. Give me two seconds for that. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. There's so many different options uh, and advantages and disadvantages that it's it's hard to say necessarily what the best system is. But yeah, Tim, I would imagine that you would be finding significant success with that. Um, Tim, are you also teaching band or just general music? You're still there. Oh, hold on, Larry, getting back. Uh, getting back to what you were just playing through the tongue drum, making it accessible for young kids and to give them a target uh, and their improv back on tongue number one. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would totally, I would totally agree with that. Um, yeah, so Larry's basically saying if you were to have a, a child improvise on the tongue drum, you're you're expressing that one is is home, um, and it doesn't it doesn't take a genius. Uh, a musical genius to understand that music has a resting uh, position, right? You know, it, it, it's, it has its, its um, where it's tension and, and resolve. I mean, all you need to do is play this for most people. And people say, well, you didn't finish it. It's like, well, what do you mean I didn't finish it? And, and they're right, right? I didn't finish the scale. That's just naturally inherently felt by by people um but yeah um i mean even with my my uh, i have a ukulele student who's in you know, first grade and i had her since kindergarten you know she understands the one chord the four chord and the five chord and the way i describe it is the one chord is home the four chord is you know you, you know a, a trip to the zoo uh you know a five chord is you know you going to, to school or you know someone going to work and that likes to go back home the most um and sometimes it likes to visit the four chord or the subdominant or whatever fancy word we want to be using with it um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's not that hard to, to, to understand on that. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. What's, what, what's Tim up to? Uh, I have pre-K eight to general beginner band and choir and concert. Okay. So, so Tim is a, a superhuman who is doing it all. Um, Tim, I would be interested to know your lesson plans are probably like pretty, pretty beefy for that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pre-K through, yeah, I'm pre-K through five and, and I'm finding, uh, and band, and I find sometimes I'm, I'm stretched too thin. But yeah, good for you. Um, although it's nice because you're your own feeder system, so <laughs> you know you only have yourself to blame. Uh, third grade, no, sorry, gearing up the kids. Sorry, let me. Tim's comment. Third grade, I start gearing up the kids uh, towards becoming well enough to reader to make band and choir an easier and fourth. Oh, I'm gonna read that one more time. Third grade, I start gearing up for the for the kids to become. Sorry, it's, it's it's not it's not the way you wrote it, Tim. It's the fact that I need glasses. Probably probably misses his old glasses. Uh, third grade, I start gearing up for the kids to become well enough to rip a man quiet. Okay, yeah. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, that makes that makes sense. Um, now I'm probably insane, and I introduce uh, rhythm reading as early as pre-K, and. Yeah, just because they, uh, you know, the kids seem to actually really enjoy it, and I'd say, "Hey, we're reading," and then you know, they get a big kick out of it. But yeah, I mean, that that makes sense. You just start gearing it up for, you know, to feed yourself. Uh, no, Tim, you did not. You did not wear it. <laughs> you did not wear that awkwardly. You uh, wore that uh, completely, completely fine. Again, it's it's bad eyesight. I should. All right, uh, Larry. Overall, if the kids have an understanding of the macro beat and independently. And independently ID an ID it uh an ID and the upbeat of oh, the of uh, the down and the upbeat sorry uh then that will set them up regardless yeah I, so yeah it's I mean I've said this some people are tappers and some people are not tappers I've had so many um guitar lessons where I'll, I'll ask the person and these are and these are these are adults um and I'll ask them like hey you know when you're in the car are you are you, you know you tapper and you can tell people who are tapper because they just naturally, even if they've never played an instrument, they they just sort of feel um, 
uh, a four four measure phrase or they feel a uh, you know four beats in a measure or they just naturally have this 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 inclination of a downbeat and then sometimes you'll have people who struggle a little bit and they will you can just kind of tell they're not tappers it, it's it's interesting because i mean i've i've always tapped i assume everyone everyone tapped in the car but i'll be like oh you know when you listen to music do you tap and they're like no and it's 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 something internal and i think as a music teacher that's part of our goal is to is to start you know, making sure that that that's that that core fundamental skill is there. Uh, and also, you know, and parents out there, I mean, you don't need to be Pavarotti singing to your child. Um, you don't, you know, just basically you need to sing as much as, as, as you know, you can. And, uh, you know, just every so often, just, you know, take whatever music you enjoy and, uh, you know, just, you know, dance to it and, and move to it. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Agreed, Larry. Okay, cool. Mm, let's see. Skip comment. Uh, regarding rhythm, when addressing meter beyond labeling it duple and triple, yeah, i.e. time signature, I feel it's appropriate to switch to the number system. Okay, so Larry, I get that. So you're saying when you are going to discuss meter uh, beyond just saying, okay, it's in two, it's in three, right? Um some people even say walking and skipping, you know, if you want to go real early, you're, you're basically saying that's when, once you go to meter, that's when you start saying, you know, one again and two. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes that actually, that's really, 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 really smart. I, I like that. Um, I probably introduced the idea of meter earlier. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing, but yeah, that totally, that totally makes sense. And that, that's where the transition would be. Right. All right, skip comment. All right, so yeah, let's uh, let's keep on moving. Okay, thanks, uh, yeah, thanks for being here, everybody. Um, this is a lot, <laughs> not nearly as sad and lonely as my last one. Um, okay, so let me just check this out real quick. So we got the vocabulary. So this is for anyone at at, at home that may not realize this. Uh, so pentatonic, we talked about that. Chromatic basically means you can play all the notes. So uh, you know you have white keys on a piano and your black keys on a piano. That can play a chromatic scale. So that can basically play all the notes that you. Would typically use, could you do microtones? Sure, no one's doing microtones. No one's concerned about microtones. I will say, with these magnets, totally get all the microtones you want. So if you're like into microtonal hipster music, get yourself a tongue drum and some magnets. Um, let's see. So yeah, we talked about the advantages of understanding solfege uh, as opposed to uh, typical ear training. And that's, you, have, you understand the tonal center, which is, huge you know understanding where you know the dough is and where everything is in relation to and and the dance that happens with uh, with music um so and uh, of course the the question always would be uh, obviously i think typically in this country we use movable dough uh in and but well, i should say because i realize there's people uh i'm in the us i'm in america and we usually use movable dough which means if i uh have this tongue drum in D, right? So it would be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then D. And if it were in C, it would be C, D, or let me go C, I can't, again, no reference pitch. C, C, D, E, no, no I'm thinking a minor scale. Hence why a movable system is important with it when you don't have a uh, perfect pitch. So yeah, basically it would be C, D, E, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, if you were um, in, in C. However, if you were using movable do, it's still do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And with a fixed pitch one, it's going to be, um, you, would, you would end up calling this would no longer be do, it would be re, because D is re. Um, Again, typically a lot of European countries do that. Uh, I know the person who I take guitar lessons with, um, you know, originally grew up in, in, in Jordan and and sort of uh, he will, you know, use sort of fixed pitch and, and, and describe it as things, uh, describe it that way. So, yeah, I mean, that's um, I think it's obvious that this is a this is a movable dough instrument, though. Um, let's see. And let's see. Uh, do we have any? Oh, let's see if we got any last comments, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's see. Skip the comment. So, uh, so Larry Little, uh, getting back to soulfish and tongue drum. What are your thoughts on labeling the tongues to allow for more comprehensive systems? Do equals do on your chart. One equals one on your chart. Okay, so, um, 
Yeah, I absolutely actually, uh, I have a coworker, Chelsea, who has a cricket machine. I do not have a cricket machine. And I had approached her of basically making soulfish stickers for the tongue drum. I think it would be more beneficial for Andy. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily bad to go between both systems. Um, cause I think it just reinforces the idea that, you know, fa is four and do is one and, you know, T is seven. So I don't think that that's necessarily the worst thing. If you have a mixture of numbers and, uh, Soulfish pitches uh, as far as the stickers. The only thing I would say as far as uh, the notation that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of doing in the playthroughs, um, again, I have a Frere Jacques one up. It's, um, it's, it should be, it should be pretty beneficial um, for people who are interested in the tongue drum or people who are interested in soulfish. But um, these instruments almost exclusively come, and, and I know you have, um, you have one, Larry. They, they come with numbers. It seems to be like a number thing. Uh, Solfege is certainly not the primary thing on this. I think it should be. Um, but anyone who's buying this, is it's coming with number stickers. I do think all the companies should probably send alternate stickers with um, Solfege pitches as well. And I think that would be a good, good, well, it'd be some movable dough. Yeah, absolutely, Tim. Um, and then uh, Larry Little, uh, we've had this conversation where movable dough with a law-based miter. I can't tell. Is that a is that a smile or is it a, a, a uh, is that with a shocked face? Yeah. So a law based minor would be um, actually wait no you are law based minor because you're ORF right. D double check on that. So a law based minor just basically means that if we were singing uh, a minor scale, it would be down here and be. Right. Um, you can see that the my my non law bass minor almost got the best of me and almost called that do. Um, and I think when you have fixed pitches such as on the tongue drum or you have fixed pitches such as uh, the the orf instrument and you're usually not changing it that much, a law bass system probably makes the most sense. Um, I know I ended up switching to a uh, a do based minor this year simply because I do a lot of songs where we'll take it and it'll be a song in major and then we'll flip it to minor. And that's easier to understand the difference by saying the sixth degree goes down, the third degree goes down, the seventh degree goes down. And uh, the kids, I think, understand that in terms of the difference between major and minor a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so absolutely. Um, oh, it was, it was a smile. All right. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to keep you guys too much longer. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're I'm going to be doing this uh, every Thursday forever because uh, I'm going to you know really make a go for this. But uh, I uh, yeah, uh, Tim and Larry, I appreciate I appreciate you guys being on YouTube and everyone who was on the Facebook stream. Um, you know, I'll, I'll check your comments out later. But I yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, and let's see, I'm trying to think. Anything else? Uh, yeah, so every, live stream every uh, every Thursday at nine uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, Basically, yeah, just talking, uh, you know, ways for uh, parents to increase their musical activities with their with their children and 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 learn uh, music as a family. Because um, again, having a son, I, I feel like it's very important in our life. Not just because I'm a musician, but there's a, a certain connection. You know, even when I'm uh, I'm singing him to bed. Well, now he's big, so it's it's this. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So they have every, every Thursday at nine and that with the stream yard stuff, if you guys, uh, you know, Tim or Larry or, you know, anyone, uh, hit me up. If you want to, you know, come on to the live stream, it's pretty, pretty simple, but, uh, yeah. Um, also fun fact, I now have the .com name of, uh, learn .com. It was available. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take that because that's, that could be useful at some point. So, all right. Thanks everyone. And I hope you guys have a great night and, uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by.